praise the Lord, you reach past the so holy. Let us go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for being holy and righteous and pure and true. We thank you for being honorable, full of compassion and loving kindness. We thank you for your justice, your holiness, your righteousness. We thank you for your conviction, your chastisement, your correction, your impartation. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for never giving us always attentive to your creation, perfecting, purging, severing, establishing, and settling. Making strong. And knowledgeable, full of understanding. Depend upon upon your holy and righteous name. We honor you. We glorify you. We exalt you as the righteous King of glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is the name. Worthy is your name. La 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 Yes. 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 The name above all names. Yes. Let his glory fill this place. It's so good. This is the God of names, be exalted in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You are known as the God of names. In the name of the God of names, as your glory fills this place. Deserve our name. Yes. Yes. How many of you know he's the name above all names? Yes. Yes. How many of you love them? Yes. Worthy is your name. Yes. Worthy is your name. What is the name Jesus? You shall be called. Oh, thank you, Lord. What is the name Jesus? You shall be called. What is the name? Yes, yeah. worthy is your name. You deserve the praise. Yeah. Worthy is your name. You deserve the praise. 
what an honor it is to have a Lord and Savior that loves us so much that is worthy to be praised. If you would please turn with me to Acts 9, starting in the fourth verse, and it reads as thus. And this is giving the event in the life of the Apostle Paul, who was originally known as Saul. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why prosecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am jealous whom thy persecute. It is hard for thee to kick against me. This passage describes the dramatic conversion of Saul on the road to Damascus. Saul was a zealous prosecutor early Christians before his encounter with Jesus. In these verses, Saul is on his way to Damascus when a bright light from heaven shines around him and he falls to the ground. He hears a voice asking him, why is he persecuting Jesus? In his response, Saul addresses the speaker as Lord and is then told that he is persecuting himself. This encounter marks a significant turning point in Saul's life, leading to a conversion to Christianity. After this event, he becomes one of the most influential figures in the early Christian church, known as the Apostle Paul, and plays a crucial role in spreading the teaching of Jesus Christ. If we were to investigate Paul's life, known as Saul, before his conver conversion, we would use the acronym as MBI, Minimum Background Investigation. When someone wants to have you investigated, they can set up certain scenarios for you to partake of to see how you would react unbeknowingly that you are being investigated. They can hire you for a position and determine your temperament, whether you are one that is easy to get along with, whether you're one that is a hard worker, meaning that you will be dedicated to completing the task at hand. Are you able to lead? Are you able to follow instruction? Do you have creativity? Are you a self-starter? Are you able to manage and supervise and coordinate? Are you able to handle large funds and small funds with integrity and character? Also, they can go back and look at all of your career to validate whether your credentials are of any authenticity that would be approved and to validate all of your working to determine the experience you have or the experience you lack. An investigation can go back from the very first time you had a job up until the time you're working and how you move through those positions where you're terminated or where you promoted. Um, were you able to advance in a certain career? The investigation would always, always look at the various abilities you have, your capabilities, your talent your strength, your skills, your ability to work independently or would you need to have supervision. However, any employment investigation that can be accomplished through an MBI, minimum background investigation, it looks at your finances, it looks at your 
property and, and any vehicles or anything that you might own. It looks at all of your assets and your, your debits. It looks at your entire overall portfolio because certain positions that you might be eligible to be hired for, they look at certain characters to determine if you are fit for the multiplicity of other organizations or churches in which you might be engaging with it. If we were to look at Paul and do a minimum background investigation, we would first have to go back to his early life. The apostle Paul was originally known as Saul. He was born in Tarsus, a city in modern day Turkey. He was a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin and was a strict Pharisee. Saul was well educated and trained as a tent maker. We would also look at how he handled diversification, how he conducted himself with those of different beliefs. That is very important. And how you conduct yourself with those of different beliefs, depending on the type of position in which you will be held responsible for. He persecuted the Christians. Saul initially opposed the followers of Jesus and played a role in the persecutions of early Christians. He was present at the stoning of the first Christian martyr, Stephen. We know Paul was converted. The Bible says Saul had a transformative encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. Acts 9, 1 through 19. This event led to his conversion to Christianity. Blinded by the encounter, Saul was led to Damascus, where Ananias, a disciple of Jesus, restored his sight and baptized him. Saul then became Paul, and his life mission shifted to spreading the Christian gospel. We also are aware that Paul was responsible for missionary journeys. Paul embarked on several missionary journeys, traveling extensively throughout the Roman Empire to preach the message of Jesus Christ. His journeys are detailed in the writings of Acts, Acts 13 through Acts 28. These journeys took him to places like Antioch, Corinth, Ephesus, Philippi, Thessalonica, and Rome. We can also look at Paul's, not just his education, because we know he was trained under Dr. Gamiel, and he was an excellent scholar, very well diverse in Pharisaic laws and practices. He also had the ability to move between two jurisdictions. He was not only a part of the Roman jurisdiction that gave him certain Roman authorization, he was now a part of the Christian that, that gave him also certain abilities. Paul faced various challenges, including imprisonment. Tradition holds that he was in prison in Rome and later executed, likely during the reign of Emperor Nero. The Bible doesn't provide explicit details about Paul's death, but we see that in his writings, Paul wrote numerous letters to various Christians community, addressing theological issues, offering guidance and encouraging believers. These letters include Romans, Corinthians, first and second, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, first and second, Timothy, first and second, Titus and Philemon. These letters make up a significant portion of New Testament. That is very significant considering that Paul was Pharisaic and he was responsible in his early life for persecuting the Christians. But yet the legacy of Paul's writings and teachings played a crucial role in shaping early Christian theology. His emphasis on faith grace and the transformative power of Christ's sacrifice profoundly influenced Christian doctrine. The life of Apostle Paul is a central narrative in early Christian church, illustrating the transformative power of faith and the impact of one person's conversion on the spread of Christianity.
looking at Paul's background, doing a minimum background investigation, we find very much about Paul. We find his before and his after. Before his conversion and after his conversion. We find how God used his educational scholarship to be able to write most of the letters and the New Testament inspired by the Holy Ghost. We saw a change and Saul converted to Paul, a dedication to uphold the things of God as opposed to persecute. But most importantly, we saw the humility that Paul demonstrated. And all of his letters, he opened it similar as Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, signifying who made him an apostle, signifying by whose will, not the will of humanity, but the will of God, signifying his authorization, his credentials that are far greater than humanity's credentials that he had previously received. Galatians opens up as Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So we see through the investigation that Paul's credentials came from God, not the will of man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. We also can see the character that was portrayed in Paul's life after conversion. We saw the anointing and which the power of God flowed through him and many circumstances as he preached and healed the multitude and many were drawn to the church. He wrote and encouraged many churches teaching on faith, grace, and the transformative power of Christ. If someone was to investigate your life today, would they find it trustworthy? Would they find it faithful in Christ Jesus? Would they find that your credentials given by God or by humanity, meaning that Paul's credentials could never be taken from him because they were given by God. So even when he was incarcerated for proclaiming the gospel, Paul never forgot who called him. Paul never forgot who anointed him. Paul never forgot who empowered him with the Holy Spirit. And he always acknowledged, even though the apostles that came before him, Peter, John, and many other disciples who did not believe initially that he had been converted by God. His reputation was so bad that no one fully understood the transformative power of God to change Paul from persecuting Christians to upholding all things by the word of the power through the spirit of Christ in his life. Paul, Paul. Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? But yet God touched his life. Many times a day we fail to experience, we fail to see signs and wonders that flows through the power of God, through the authorization of God, through the name of Jesus Christ in those lives that truly transforms. While the disciples could see their life change, initially they were afraid of Saul, Paul, because they remembered him as Saul.
And so initially there was a controversy. A controversy between the character, the conduct of Saul versus the character, the conduct of home. Isn't it interesting that the Bible tells us that if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. How well did Paul project the new creation? that the old ways had passed away. Paul was the very validation of the epitome of the word of God being upheld in his life. Second Corinthians 4, 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Ephesians 4.24 puts it this way. And that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. 2 Corinthians 4.6 says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. How well did Paul meet the face of Jesus Christ in the conversion of his life? Something very significant. And Colossians 3.10 validates all the scripture, and he has put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. We see the validation. We see the illumination. We see the revelation. We see the confirmation. We see the holiness, righteousness, and justification that was placed upon Paul's life when Jesus Christ touched his life and took him out of darkness and put him in the marvelous light. Paul, maximum, minimum background investigation that confirmed the calling of God upon his life. He was not called by Gabriel. He was not called by the Pharisees. He was called by Jesus Christ, converted by Jesus Christ to be an apostle. And he never forgot who called him. He never forgot whose will was it for his life. He never forgot the authorization that instructed him and confirmed him to be an apostle. And by the will of God, Jesus Christ. We can walk down our life and journey and have an investigation. The investigation will determine much. Are you able to end? undergo a minimum background investigation such as Paul. God knows all things, but humanity would have to investigate Paul. The Pharisees investigated Paul. They couldn't understand the conversion. He was once a part of their religious sect. Now he's for Christianity. He's upholding Christ and Christ's standards. He's living for Christ. He's on the other side of the Pharisee and the Sadducees. Mm -hmm. 
You could say he found himself caught in the middle of religious sectors. But he was held up by the power of God that sustained him in faith. He learned not to frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. You see, the Pharisees wanted to uphold the law that they couldn't even keep. They appeared outwardly pure and holy and righteous, but inwardly they were defiled. And how well did Paul understand that? Because he once was a part of their regime. He once had their theology and their mind. But when God gave him a mind of Christ and a heart after Christ, it completely changed his new life into the image of God. You could say, theologically, that Paul presented his body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which was his reasonable service. He no longer was conformed to this world, but he was transformed by the renewing of his mind that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He allowed the faith that God had placed within him to increase. As he began his new journey, being investigated through all of his teaching and acts because many wanted to remind him of the soul he once was. But yet Paul never looked back at Saul. His desire was the new creation in which God had given him Paul, that I may know him, Jesus Christ, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Paul, minimum background investigation, another acronym, MBI. If you were to read all of Paul's writing in the New Testament, all of his letters, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. All 13. It will validate the investigation that he had truly been converted by Jesus Christ. It will certify, resonate that he had truly been baptized with the Holy Spirit and able to work in ways that only could be manifested through the spirit of holiness. In addition to that, we would also see in the writings of Paul His dedication to a God that gave him a second chance. Paul learned that God's mercies are new every day. Great is his faithfulness. So as he continued to journey, to his missionaries assignment God gave him. He understood how to acquire and achieve 
maximum beneficial investment in the kingdom of God. While they were performing a minimum background investigation, all the religious leaders and even some of the disciples that were now a part of his circle because he had become one of them. Paul didn't focus on the investigation. He focused on maximizing the benefits for the investment towards the kingdom of God. From MBI, minimum background investigation, to maximizing the benefits of investing in the kingdom of God. Let us get ready to pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for how you've shown yourself mighty. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, that there's no door that you can't control. There's no paths that you can't make straight. There's nowhere that we can hide ourselves from you except under the shadow of your almighty. But you are omniscient and you know all things. We thank you for how you transform lives even today. And if we were truthful, about our very own life. We can see the change of your signature upon our life, making us more dependent upon you. Stable in your character. Desiring more and more to please you above all others, seeking you in time of help and praise, rejoicing because of who you are and what we are to you, your inheritance, resting in your provisions and protection. You are surety and forever living and yet you're learning more of you daily. Your new mercies that are new every morning. Your faithfulness that fell if not. Lord, we thank you that we can undergo any minimum background investigation, even a maximum background investigation and because of the impartation of your Holy Spirit and which we have dedicated our vessels to you our reasonable service of all who calls on your name so that we could be pleasing in your sight because we can be pleasing in your sight through obeying you loving you submitting to you Abiding in your wisdom, allowing your knowledge and understanding to flourish. We can maximize on the benefits of the investment for your king. Father, we thank you for your wisdom because of who you are. Your ways are profitable in all ways. You truly uphold all things by your power and you transform lives through your power. You take the old nature and you transform it into the new made after your image and righteousness and holiness. And the old things are truly passed away. and never desire to surface again. You bring knowledge. You reveal. You make known truth because you are the spirit of truth.
And so we thank you and honor you because of who you are. The living, risen Savior. The only wise, immortal, invisible, eternal, God and Lord of creation. Let us never forget you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You're the first and the last. At the conclusion of all matters. You are holy and righteous and pure and true and just and honorable. And of a good report. Let us desire to see your face. The light of the knowledge of God so that we will forever be pleasing in your sight. Let us be found to the praise of your glory. As you allow our lives to be open for any investigation, that we come out as pure gold because we've attained through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit Everything that you've given to us that pertains to life and godliness. Your ways works and they always are. <laughs> There's nothing we can't do in Christ Jesus that's according to your will. There's nothing that you can't supply according to your riches in heaven that is according to your will. There is no knowledge that we cannot attain that is according to your will. And no powers we cannot behold that is according to your will. We thank you. We honor you. We praise your holy and your righteous name. And we rejoice in the one who's worthy. Thank you for the MBI, maximum benefit investment for the king. Thank you for seeing these earthly vessels and depositing your excellency within them so that we can maximize on the benefits that you have stowed before these vessels as an investment for your king. Let all we say and do be well-pleasing in your sight. Let our life be a reflection of the very glory that you behold. Let the anointing flow where signs and wonders will follow because it is your working through these vessels. Let us be so attuned to your assignment, to your ways and your will. Let us be so dependable upon you that you're forever the first on our mind and the last at our down setting. Let all that we say never return void, but always prosper for what it goes forth to. Let our mind excel human understanding. Let our ways be incomparable to human ways. Let our works validate by the will of God, not by man or humanity, but by the power of God. Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead and has poured his spirit out on all flesh that would receive so that we can operate and live in greater works than what these earthly vessels can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The Bible says, now we have received not the spirit of this world, 
but the spirit which be is of God, that we not, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. This is 2 Corinthians 2, 12. And then 13 goes on to say, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. MBI. Amen. 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 Amen.